Adam Sinka. Hold the slides for just a second. So a couple things, I do really exist. Uh, I was going to be here last year, had some health stuff uh, go on, but happily my wife, kids are here with me and we're having a fantastic time. Thank you for the hospitality. So the problem with going last in anything, especially something like this, is I'm between you and drinks. That's A. B, everyone before me has already said everything remotely interesting. So I've got to somehow clean this up, get you out to drinks, as fast as humanly possible, all right? So we're gonna go ahead and talk a little bit today about high performers. And I want you to think differently about high performers than you've probably ever thought about high performers, okay? I'm gonna challenge the idea that what we all have believed in all of our lives is that there's standards in HR. And the standards in HR are there for a reason because we wanna treat everybody the same way. So tonight, in the next five minutes, I want you to disassociate from reality and imagine a world where you didn't treat everyone the same way. Start the slides. I'm not gonna call anybody dumb, by the way. So the standards that we've fallen in love with have come to us in many forms. Sherm, through peers, through peer pressure, uh, through the executives that we work with, that we have to treat everyone the same way. As if everyone's a Twinkie, or a pencil, or an inanimate object. We have to treat everyone the exact same way. High potentials, high performers, top talent, A talent, whatever we call it, right? They want to be treated differently. They actually want to be met where they're at. I think the reason that we've fallen in love with standards, quite frankly, not that we're lazy, but it's a, least, a pass of least resistance. It makes everything in our life easy. When we think about objects like the camera, or the floor, or the chair, or the lights. Those things are like objects. There's flash bulbs, or um, cars, or Godiva chocolate, whatever the bit is, they're like objects. And so you can consider them as like objects. But people in this room, there's no two of us that are equal. And let me let that resonate for just a moment. There's no two people in this room that are equal, or that will ever be equal. And that's hard for us to consume because we've been taught all of our lives that no, we should be equals. We should be just like, or we should aspire to be just like. What I'm here to tell you is no, we shouldn't. You should actually be better than whomever you're in the mix with, okay? A lot of people ask me about HR from a perspective of what's the most important thing in HR? And I'm here to tell you that I think that HR boils down to one thing. The, how we retain top talent. Our ability, the board, shareholders, the executives, everyone is looking at us for one thing. How do we retain our top talent? I'm not going to ask the rhetorical question of how many of you believe that 80% of the value comes from 20% of the firm, because I already know that it's true. And I know that you believe that, whether or not you'd ever say it publicly or not. You know in your heart there's a difference in your firm between critical and important and people that just kind of, they're there, okay? You know this, especially when you have to go through a riff and you have to let go of people because then you make a short list of who the firm cannot live without, right? That's when you know. That's when, if you haven't done that yet or if you haven't done succession planning, which by the way, no one does succession planning, but beyond that, in your mind, if you did succession planning, one of the things that you'd learn is that there's a difference between talent, important talent, and critical talent. And that critical talent makes your firm. It isn't the old CEOs, ah, oh, people are our most important assets, whatever. No, the people are actually the firm. That 10%, 20%, that actually is your firm. You're amongst that, by the way. You're part of that. If you're not, you should aspire to be, okay? Back to the story. One of the things that gets in the way of treating people differently is we throw ourselves into the mix. I want to be treated a certain way. Treat others like you would treat yourself, right? You want people to treat you a certain way. High potential, top talent, A talent, whatever the you want to call it, 
they don't want to go through the same performance review that another person went through. That's not on their level. Okay? We adhere to standards and say, well, no, you have to go through the performance review. Because, you know, everybody goes through the performance review, it's the same performance review, everybody has it. And the problem is, is what we do is we affect their morale and their productivity and their outputs by forcing them into a false construct of being in standards that we don't really have to have. High performers, you'll see Michael Jordan a bunch because he was my favorite athlete and a high performer. And I think Tim did him justice earlier when he talked about failure. Do you honestly think, I mean, we didn't, none of us here knew Michael Jordan or know Michael Jordan. Let's just put that aside. Do you honestly think in practice that he did the exact same thing as B.J. Armstrong? Really? You really, you're going to go to bed thinking that thought, they, that Steve Kerr, God love him, University of Arizona grad, you think that Steve Kerr and Michael Jordan did the same things in practice? Do you think they were treated the same way? Do you think their lockers were the same? No, of course not. He was treated differently. He was treated uniquely. He was treated special. He is special. He is unique. And we should treat him differently because he's fantastic. The Chicago Bulls would have been morons had they not treated him differently. So why is it in our organization okay to take the Michael Jordans of our organization and treat them like the B.J. Armstrongs? Why is that okay? Outside of why we're here and what we've learned, we're a product of being at this place where we've learned these things through experience and time and forces of nature where most of that is wrong when it relates to top talent. And I'll tell you who knows it. Carmen Hudson knows it. Chris Bailey knows it. Chris Dunn knows it. Tim Sackett knows it. Jennifer McClure knows it. And the reason is that, not, not that they're special. They are, of course, wonderful people. They're in recruiting. They see it every day. Imagine reaching out to Michael Jordan on the phone. Hey, Mike. Uh, oh, click. You think Michael Jackson, uh, Michael Jordan's going to answer the phone? Really? You think he doesn't have seven phones and eight people answering them? Really? Of course he does. And so does the talent that we're trying to reach. So those that are in sourcing and recruiting deal with this every single day. They have to deal with the fact that you treat people differently based on the value that they're going to bring, the presumed value that they're going to bring to your firm. So how do we fall out of love with standards? <laughs> you got to rewire yourself. You got to actually talk to people within your firm, your, both your executives, people on your team, your board, and everyone else, that actually the people that are the most important, they're going to get the things that make them successful. Because their success drives the most value. And I'll prove this for a second. Take your folks that just kind of push paper. And they're important. Don't, don't get me wrong. I'm trying to make a point by delineating between them. They're important. They have to be there. I get it. They occupy a seat. Somebody's at a keyboard. But the value of that person versus the value of your top performer in whatever department, sales, operations, marketing, HR, whatever, is not even close to one another. You get incrementally more value out of your A player, that dwarfs in comparison to 15 of these people. So I know it's against everything in our fiber. And I know I'm kind of hitting you with something fairly intellectual at the very end, and I apologize for that. I should have went first. Um, I want you to rewire yourself. I want you to think about talent differently. When you go to work, not tomorrow, because you're going to come to the conference, but on Friday or maybe Monday, because you have a long weekend, I want you to actually think about talent differently. And don't apply the same old thing that you've applied to talent, where you say, oh, no, we've got to treat people as equals. Turns out they're not. News at 11. They're not equals. They'll never be equals. The only thing that we're in the way of is progress and how we treat them. Thank you for listening to me. We have picked up.